It's going. Okay, if they're going, we're going. Uh, well, welcome to our home, New Beginnings Christian Center in Vanuva. Uh, we have a, a small gathering, and we're, we're in compliance, and we are uh, exercising uh, social distancing. Uh, I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. But uh, I just want to welcome you into our home. Uh, this is our home, the church family for New Beginnings, and uh, myself, uh, Pastor Bill, I, I pastor here with my wife, Cheryl, and uh, she is also the uh, children's minister, along with Carrie, her, her assistant. Uh, we have many, uh, many people here who minister in the Lord, and we're really blessed, and thank you for uh, our guests, Gloria and Tim, for being here. Uh, you bless me. And uh, I'm glad I met you yes. in uh, Save Mart. As a matter of fact, I met uh, Gloria in Save Mart this week. And what happened was there was a woman that passed by. And I thought she said, come on, Mom. I thought she was talking to Gloria. So I just thought she was a daughter or something. And I reached out and grabbed her hand and, and gave her a hug. And she's looking at me like, what the heck are you doing? And I said, oh, my God. I realized that it wasn't anybody really related to her. And it was really kind of funny. So, uh <laughs> you know, it was really comical. And I says, oh, I'm sorry I touched you. Is it okay? She says, yeah, I guess it's okay. And, and then I was like, oh, boy, I blew that one. But it, it was fun. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. she asked me if, uh, she told me that the church was closed. I said, well, we're going to be open. She said, but I'm coming. And uh, sure enough, she came. So she's a woman of a word, so I appreciate right. that. Yeah. So open your Bibles, if you will, to Psalm 91, 1 and 2. That's where we're going to start today because... Uh, we have been uh, given an order in Cal California to basically shelter in place. Now, that's, uh, that's kind of the main order that's out there, but uh, the, so the sermon title is Sheltered in Place. Sheltered in Place, and I'm going to build this around three psalms, actually. Psalm 15, Psalm 24, and Psalm 91. Those are the three psalms I'm going to be building with here today. But for Psalm 91, uh, I'm going to be reading verses 1 and 2, so here we go. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest. Somebody say rest. Yes. Rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So Heavenly Father, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do here today and how you're going to use this video live streaming to touch lives that I normally would not be able to touch. I thank you in advance for this, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And all his people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. So we are in the season of Passover. This is a time of celebration. This is the, we, we don't want the circumstances to be able to steal our joy. Amen. You know, we're, we're surrounded by a lot of circumstances that we're, you know, with uh, lack of, of supplies and stores and people hoarding. And there's a lot of things going on. That there are a lot of things coming at us to try to steal our joy. But uh, this is a time when we celebrate the risen Christ. This is a time when we celebrate the exodus of the Hebrew nation out of slavery. This is a time when, uh, it's a time to rejoice and sing of the goodness of God. We sing that song here, you know, so I will sing of the goodness of God. I love that song. Uh, but I know the times we are living in can be stressful. We're hearing new terms now, new terms like social distancing. Is it really a new term? How many of us remember the, the you know, my personal bubble? You know, I, I want to maintain my bubble, or, and people telling you you're in their space. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. So this really isn't new. It's just a new word. It's a new term. Uh, uh, give me my space. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I do not have Corona. I have allergies. <laughs> Uh, and we are exercising elbow bumps today, and it's very difficult for us because we are a full contact church here. <laughs> <laughs> we used to hugging and loving and kissing, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, so that being said. But the government has issued an order for uh, sheltering in place or stay at home. So these are things that are new to us, uh, and we're, we're trying to you know, navigate all of this stuff and uh, see what we can do to... Uh, just kind of deal with it, you know? The news media is constantly uh, reporting on new cases of COVID-19, the coronavirus, um, and reporting the death toll, Yeah. right? Um, they don't tell you the other side of it, though. The other side of that is there are many other people who have contacted the virus, and they, within two weeks, uh, they're fine. Um, there are many, many thousands who have contacted the disease and have just had to go through a bad flu season you know, and it's nasty, it is, so I'm, so I'm not trying to minimize it, but they, they survive, it's okay. 
It's just those with underlying health issues, especially asthmas or lung diseases. They're in, for, they're in for a run, and we have to keep them especially in prayer. There seems to be an attempt to create fear, which has resulted in people hoarding supplies like toilet paper. Like I said, they had the police over there at Walmart. It's crazy. There's a shortage on the shelves of canned goods, flushable wipes, <laughs> hand sanitizers. But I've got a news flash for you. Those things are not in short supply. I have some friends that, uh, that are high up in Walmart that I've talked to, and what a lot of people don't know, what the news is not reporting to you, is that the passes are closed because of snow, and the trucks can't get here. They are packed to the brim. The warehouses are packed with stuff. It's just they can't get in here fast enough because people are scared and they're hoarding. But now more rain is coming and more snow is coming, so it's going to delay it again. But you know what? Our God has a way of making yes. crooked paths straight, yes. you know, amen? Yes. And he has a way of, he can open up the paths, he can get the trucks here. Uh, so we have no, no reason to fear. Uh, and uh, besides, the supplies have not left the planet. No. No. They're still here. And if worse comes to worse, I know that guy that's got 1,000 cases of toilet paper in his garage will eventually have to sell them. So you might pay a premium for it, but you will be okay. Now, I don't know about you. I don't want to get gross here, but nothing's going to stop me from cleaning my bottle. Amen. Amen. I can improvise. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to move on from there. I don't want to... Yeah, all right. my wife's going to be really upset I did that. <laughs> but in the midst of chaos and fear, I can see the hand of God working. For me and my wife, uh, I've already received the delivery of toilet paper. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mike and Vicki. Mm. We've already received eggs because I was down to my last three eggs and I couldn't get eggs. Thank you, Mike and Vicki. Uh, <laughs> man, I tell you what. And then on top of that, uh, we haven't had an oven since before Christmas. And that was delivered on Friday. We now have a brand new oven, and it's a smart oven. I can, I can, I can start the oven up from here. Yeah, I want to mess with my wife. I can start the oven while she's sitting at home. It'd be awesome, you know. And have alarms go off on it and everything else. I can do it through my cell phone because I got a smartphone. And I got an app for it. It's really kind of cool. We, we wanted to. My wife always wanted a flagpole out in front of the house. We installed a flagpole with the American flag at the top, and right below it is the Christian flag. And for me, that symbolizes that our nation stands on the word of God. You know, so I, I love that. And it, it reminds me every day. And yes, it is lit at night. I got, a, I got a thing that looks like a flying saucer on the top. It's a solar light that keeps it lit all night long. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And if that wasn't enough, many of you know, if you know us, uh, for the longest time, we had no front steps. Uh, our house was three feet off the ground, and the only way to get to the front door was to climb up on the, on the deck and then, uh, like, stand off to the side to open the door to get in the house. And uh, it's been like, wow, but, you know, we didn't have the finances. But miraculously, finances came in, and we were able to build a deck on the front of the house. So now we have access to the front door. Praise, Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm celebrating all over the place. I got reasons to rejoice. So here. But here's the most significant blessing I received so far. <clears throat> Last week, I got a text from my brother. Now, since my parents have died, our family kind of scattered. Uh, and since my divorce, uh, my first my divorce, my first wife, our family kind of scattered. And uh, I have very little contact with my family. I try to reach out, but you know, it's like everybody's just all over the place. But I got a text from my brother, and he's Catholic. And he says, uh, he sent me a letter, he says, hey, bro, he says, the, the Pope has asked for worldwide prayer. Uh, at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, against the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus. And he, he gave me that text at a quarter to six, our time, Pacific time, which means in 15 minutes, I will be in unity with my brother, coast to coast, praying together with him, and I did. And uh, we made contact, and we've been in contact since. So God, through this virus, has opened up a communication between my brother and I, and, and what better way to do it than with corporate prayer? Yes. 
Wasn't that awesome? Thank so you. come on, guys. What I'm trying to tell you here, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for God's going to turn into good. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. So we're hearing testimony upon testimony of people seeking God, miraculous healings as a result of prayer. A friend of mine, Kevin, was working at his church, getting ready for his live streaming. And he's telling me, he, he looked down the hallway, and there was a woman looking in the door because they've got a brand new church downtown, uh, Grace of God. Kevin uh, and his wife, Sarah, they're awesome people. And he's got a real gift of healing. He runs a healing room here in town also. And what happened was, this woman was looking at the door, so he went out there to greet them. He says, can I help you? She says, is this a church? And it turns out that her husband was an addict, and he's struggling. And she was a woman who crippled with arthritis. Both rotator cups were blown out. Uh, she was in so much pain, her back was screwed up, and so much so that her, her drug addict husband had to carry her purse. And she says, well, she says, uh, we, we, we want to know, we, we're looking for a place that we can get prayer. I see here that you have, like, healing rooms. And, and he says, well, I can pray with you now. Well, at, at our meeting, uh, he showed me two pictures. First picture was this guy laying flat on his back in front of the church on the sidewalk. <laughs> and then she gave a video testimony that God completely healed her body from head to toe. Wow. And she's waving her hands and everything. She's lifting her arms. God is good. This is a time of celebration. There are things happening. This is not a time to panic or fear. It's a time to embrace opportunities and advance the kingdom of God. Somebody say hallelujah. So I, I, I titled my message today, Sheltered in Place. So before I begin, let's examine together the definition of a shelter. So there's two definitions. One is a, as a noun and the other is a, as a verb. So as a noun... Uh, it's something that covers or affords protection. An establishment providing food and shelter, like homeless shelters, right? An establishment that houses and feeds stray or unwanted animals. Here's what I like. A position or the state of being covered and protected. Now, as a verb, sheltered or sheltering, it's to constitute or provide a shelter for or to place under shelter or protection. That being said, let's begin. So my first point, the shelter of the Lord is a place of rest. Amen. Amen. So often we complain about life and its busyness and we're, we're crying out for a break. I need a break. I need a vacation. I need some rest. <laughs> then when rest comes in the form of a stay-at-home order, we complain about it. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people are like, well, I gotta stay home. I gotta be with my kids. Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> what a great opportunity we've been given to spend quality time with our families. Yeah. What a great opportunity for parents to share their faith with their children. Yeah. 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 Bake some cookies. Amen. Play board games. Communicate. When you come into the presence of the Lord, you'll find rest for your soul. Psalm 116, 7 says, Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. In Jeremiah 6, 16, it says, This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. How many of you would, would agree with me today? We are at a crossroads. Oh, yeah. I believe God is watching from his heavenly throne to see how we're all going to deal with this situation that, he, that I believe he has allowed to come. Amen. It didn't come from him, but he's allowing it to happen for a season. Right. Yeah. This is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. <laughs> Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you'll find rest for your souls. And here's my favorite in the New Testament from Matthew 11, 29. This is Jesus speaking. So when Jesus speaks, we listen. we listen, right? Yeah. And he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, I'm going to come back to this a little later in my message, but for now, the second point I'm coming to is the shelter of the Lord is a place of refuge. A place of refuge. Now, the definition of refuge as a noun is simply this. It's shelter or protection from danger or distress. It's a place that provides shelter or protection, something to which one has recourse in difficulty. And we can admit 
We are living in difficult times. And as a verb, either to be in refuge or refuging, <laughs> to give refuge to, to seek or take refuge. Now, in the natural, God's house should be a refuge in our community. This place should be a place of refuge. The only requirement to enter the church is to show up. There's no requirements to come here other than the door is open, it's unlocked, come on and grab a seat. Yes, well, today we have a little more requirements. We're saying, please, so let's try and obey the uh, commands of the government. Let's, let's obey the authorities. So let's, uh, let's actually uh, exercise uh, social distancing. Thank you for coming in, Kelly and, and, and Jesse, and uh, exercising social distancing. Thank you, guys. Okay. So the, the old hymn states, come just as you are. I know Billy Graham, uh, his, his uh, worship leader, used to sing this at every event. Come just as you are. This is when he'd sing this at the altar call. And it's true. It doesn't, you don't have to get cleaned up before you come. Just come. You know, it, it's like, I, I'm a catch and release guy when it comes to fishing. I, I don't usually keep the fish I, I catch. I just like to look at them and let them go again, you know? And uh, that's what God told me. He says, you catch them, I'll clean them. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Because I'm a fisher of men. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Okay? So when I, catch a, when I catch a fish, I give them to Jesus. Amen. Oh, Amen. Many who come to church are searching for answers to life's problems, and some are simply looking for the truth. There's truth here. There's truth in the houses of God, hopefully. Yeah. As a church family, we should always be ready to embrace a stranger yes. as a special guest yes. and show them the love of Jesus until they come to have a personal relationship with him themselves. But for now, we're going to be the only Jesus they're ever going to meet. Mm. That's an awesome responsibility God has given to us. Now, in the spirit, I just talked about the natural, the house of God, the building here. But in the spirit, we may ascend to a holy place. Our hope is that while you're our guest here, that you're going to experience the presence of God. And when that happens, this can be very confusing to a newbie. It can be very confusing, and, and it, it can be uncomfortable, it can, because it can be very emotional. Uh, it can make them uncomfortable. So it's up to us to help them navigate through the experience and let them know that they are experiencing, all the stuff that they're experiencing is God's presence. Amen. They don't even realize they've been lifted up into the spiritual realm, from the natural to the supernatural, yeah. and they're experiencing something for the first time in their lives. Yeah. I remember the first time it happened to me when I went to a Pentecostal church. First of all, I was raised Roman Catholic in St. Francis de Chantel in the Bronx. I was 38 years old plus, went to a Pentecostal service, and uh, all of a sudden people stood up. I didn't hear any bell. I thought the people were crazy and they were being out of order. Uh, the worship started playing, people were dancing and getting crazy, and I'm standing there like, what the heck is going on here? These people are nuts. And all of a sudden, I felt, that, and I explained this to my wife later, I felt like I was a, a, a set of dentures put into a glass of Ephrodite, and all these bubbles started coming up to clean me. And that's the only way I could explain it. I felt these bubbles coming up. Like, I felt like I was lifted off the floor, and God was just washing my body, and I'm standing there going, what the heck? And the more I tried to explain it, it stopped. Mm -hmm. And I turned to my, my wife at the time and says, we need to get out of here now. I need to leave. Something just happened. I don't know. It was kind of funny because when I talked about it with her after church because she made me stay, she got so jealous. She said, I'm standing right next to you and I didn't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording this. I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, nah, she, she handled it very well, actually. I associate this experience with planning a wedding or big event. One of the most enjoyable things for me is scheduling a food tasting time. <laughs> Anybody ever get to do that? Oh my Lord, I tell you what, there is nothing better than food tasting. You go there and the chef prepares his best and he puts it all, lays it out all up in front of you, you get to taste everything. Oh my goodness. By the time you're done testing, you've eaten three meals. <laughs> but then you get to select what you want from the menu. And here's the thing, once you decide what you what you, what, that it tastes good? Some of you know where I'm going already. Oh, yeah. You enter into a contract with that venue. 
and you schedule the event. I see this as an opportunity for the Lord to hold out a sample of what he has to offer and then leave it up to the individual as to whether or not they want to sample some more. Once you agree on the menu, you'll voluntarily make a contract and begin to move forward in anticipation of the banquet. With that being said, let's examine what the requirements of that contract may look like as it pertains to the Lord. My last point, who may dwell in the shelter of the Lord? Let's talk about getting there first. Amen. Psalm 24, three through five, open your Bibles, take a look at that. Psalm 24, three through five. Remember, this is just the getting there part. I'll give you a second to get there. I'm gonna drink some water. You guys are watching on YouTube or Facebook Live. I praise God for the water I drink. Praise you, Lord, for your supply. Psalm 24, 3 through 5. And the word of God says this, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may ascend? Who may begin to climb? Okay? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands. Isn't that interesting? Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god? They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Uh, isn't it interesting that this is about the first thing that's mentioned is the washing of the hands. Hallelujah. There is, there is a, 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 an edict out right now with the, uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus thing. They say wash your hands continually. Uh, in fact, wash them for at least two minutes. In, in, symbolic, uh, in symbolism, when we're talking about the Lord, when it pertains to Him, we're talking about washing away the sin, washing away the filth that is on us that the world has put upon us or that we have so freely indulged in. Yeah, yeah. Just washing that away. It's a sign of repentance. Uh, it's a sign of baptism. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Then it says one who is a pure heart. That, that's somebody who has a desire to follow Jesus and grow in faith. And again, like I said, once that happens, it's followed with this baptism, which is a whole body wash. Come on, somebody. It's a whole body wash yeah. where the entire body is cleansed, but it's a public confession of their faith. Yeah. They're not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. They want to shout it from the rooftop. They want to show people, I believe. I believe. And then in that time, that's when they receive the gift of Holy Spirit. Yes. Now the Holy Spirit is in them. And we know that's a whole other teaching we can get into because then they need it to, Holy Spirit to be, come upon them, to be filled, to be ignited, blah, blah, blah. But that is a free gift. So what about staying there? So now we, we, we're able to get there. So we're able to get there. Now we're there and we're on the mountain. But let's look at Psalm 15. Talk about staying there. Let me open this up here real quick. How are we doing for time? We're doing good. I think we're going to be okay. Psalm 15. I'm glad I broke my glasses because I got the rural print Bible. This was the Bible I received at my ordination from our bishop, Bishop Colmer and his wife. We love you, Bishop, and uh, thank you. Um, so it's, it's, it's real simple and it's real short. But I'm just going to read the first couple of voice, uh, verses. Voices. And my Bronx came out. The voices. Oh. Uh, Psalm 15, a Psalm of David. Lord, who may dwell? Somebody say dwell. Well, Come on now, we're talking about living. Who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? See, it's one thing to get there, but are you going to be allowed to stay? Mm. <laughs> wow. Because those, those, who, those uh, the ones whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts 
and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent, whoever does these things will never be shaken. I love this stuff. So how can we be blameless, righteous, Speak the truth from our heart. Once again, I'm reminded of the Hebrew nation awaiting the exodus from Egypt. They covered their household with the blood of the sacrificial Passover lamb. Yes, sir. Not all were blameless. When they did this, not all were blameless, not all were righteous. However, because of their obedience, because of their faith in the blood over their lives, they were made blameless and righteous in the eyes of the Lord. And death passed them by. Jesus is our Passover lamb. And I said earlier, I'll be coming back to this scripture, Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, when Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The blood he shed on the cross was for each and every one of us. He took all of the sins of the world upon himself and paid the price for them. He redeemed us by his sacrifice. Through him, we are blameless. Through him, we are made righteous. Through him, we are given permission to dwell in the sacred tent of God. Amen. And live forever on his holy mountain. So here's what I want to give to you today. I want to give you an invitation, especially those that are watching on Facebook Live and on YouTube. The blessings of godliness and the pursuit of wisdom are, all, are for all who seek God as their highest. The description of God's protection as shelter, shadow, suggests the imagery of a mother bird whose wings, uh, baby birds, find safety. Come on now. Many of you have seen this. I watched a thing on YouTube where there was a tractor working the fields, and it was stirring up the furrows, and there was a mama partridge out in the field with baby partridges, and it, it, she just couldn't get them to move fast enough. And what she did is she saw the, the, the big motor tractor coming and she took her wings and covered her babies and to the best of her ability, she just tried to protect them from the oncoming certain death. As it turns out, a matter of micrometers, <laughs> the tractor passed by and the, 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 the partridge was, and she lifted her wings and there were the babies and they scurried off to safety. Those who trust in the Lord enjoy his hospitality and protection. So today I want to send out an invitation. Some of you may not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And some of you may have had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and decided to uh, go astray. So I want to give you an invitation today, especially in these times, to know where you can find rest, peace, and blessings. That's by just uh, praying a simple prayer. That's, that's what's going to open the door. It, it's not the end, it's the beginning. So I want you right now just to consider yourself and consider Jesus. If you were the only sinner in the world, Jesus would have died on that cross for you. But the Word of God says he, he died for the sins of the world. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. And I want you to pray this prayer with me if you're willing. Don't say it. I want you to pray. I want you to mean it with all your heart. And it basically covers this in Romans 10, 9. It says, if, if, you, uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. I want you to receive salvation today. So we're going to lead you in a prayer this morning. And uh, those that are with me here today, uh, they're going to join with you. They're going to pray this with you. Um, and for anyone who's here that needs to pray the prayer for, uh, let's say, house cleaning, a washing of the hands, so to speak, uh, let's do it together. And simply say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I've sinned, I've sinned. But, I believe you died for my sins, but I believe you died for my sins, and I believe you rose again. I believe you rose again. Forgive, my sins. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Lord, and be my Savior. Be my 
In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I want to thank you for coming here today. Uh, if you have any special prayer requests, I just ask on Facebook, uh, leave a comment for me. Uh, my wife and I will be sure to pray for you, and I'll pass it along to our prayer team. Uh, on YouTube, if you're watching there, put, it, put a comment under the video. I just ask that when you go to RevWill826, uh, that uh, you subscribe and uh, push the little bell. Uh, and I'll explain why that's important later on. Uh, I'm not looking to make money on this. <laughs> uh, but uh, share the video. If you, if you like what you just heard, share the video. Uh, so, and, uh, and let God get all the glory. So I thank you for being with us today. Let's give God a hand clap. And uh, that's it. So we let that down, just uh, do that stop. And uh, we'll do that. Just press the stop. And uh, 